Hey guys, it's uh, Dave Bartley RC, aka Dark Side Greedy. Just got a uh, a new 3D quadcopter. This is the Aerial Freaks Hyper 400 3D helicopter or uh, quadcopter uh, by Aerial Freaks. Chose this one uh, because I had another one before and. Honestly, I didn't really care for how it looked. Uh, this one caught my eye as soon as I saw it. Uh, it definitely looks like no other 3D quadcopter or any other quadcopter for that matter. Um, thanks to the uh, very stylish Cano Mod fiberglass custom painted canopy. Kind of gives it a racy, spacey look to it. Um, and also the quality of this quadcopter is far more than what you're actually paying for. Uh, it's got full carbon fiber booms. Uh, I think they're a millimeter or a millimeter and a half. Comes with uh, aluminum motor mounts. Um, there's a lot of aluminum inside for spacers and stuff and there's also aluminum landing gear. Um, it comes pre-assembled. Uh, you guys might have already seen a, an opening, a, a box opening video. Uh, which there wasn't much to show because it was already assembled, so I'm choosing to skip that. Um, but again, I like how it looks a lot. I um, already test hovered it, and I will get into that in a second. But what I want to show you is what I did with it and uh, uh, some important things you might want to know. So first of all, I'm going to take the canopy off, which is just held on pretty much with a carter pin and a grommet which it still fits on pretty tight, but you never want to fly it without the grommet on there, I mean without the pin on there. And then it wraps around the front, which locks in the front half. <coughs> Excuse me. So inside you see, basically it's it's real simple layout. It makes it very light. Uh, does not come with the battery strap. Uh, I do recommend putting one in there. Um, I had one lying around, so I used it uh, just because it's going to keep the battery a lot more secure, especially if you're doing any 3D with it. Um, but all, it's all pre-wired. Um, again, I said pre-built. Uh, one thing you want to do for sure is go through all of the bolts that are on anything metal, which is, I think, pretty much every screw that's on here is going into something metal. Just make sure it's all Loctited. Try to loosen it about a half a turn and see if it you know, gives you any resistance. And if it does, you're good to go. The Loctite's there. If not, and it, and it breaks away free and loose, then uh, pull the screw out and Loctite it. I did mine. I checked all mine, and they were all Loctited. But these are assembled by people, and people can make mistakes. So just for safety purposes, make sure everything's Loctited, including the motor mounts, the motor mount bolts, the clamps, um, everything in here. Uh, just, just, just for peace of mind. I'm using a Spectrum system, so uh, just using a Spectrum satellite, which is really easy because the Spectrum satellite cable is already pre-soldered on the board, and all I had to do is bind this to my separate receiver. Um, there is a way to bind uh, the receiver through the, um, the base flight software, uh, though I did not really get into that because I already had a receiver lying around, so I just bound it to my receiver. It's a DSMX satellite, so you'll need a DSMX receiver. If you use a DSM-2 satellite, you'll need a DSM-2 receiver. You can't intermix the two and try to bind. It won't work. You can see the four speed controllers mounted to the bottom, which is going to allow for a whole lot of cooling. Um, on my little test hover flight earlier today, the controllers did get pretty warm, but I was only hovering, and it was already pretty warm outside, too. Uh, any airflow is going to instantly cool those down. And as far as the battery goes, there's a whole, there's a, some ventilation. To, there's plenty of ventilation actually to go through and to cool the battery down while you're in flight. Also, uh, the kit does come with um, some neon vinyl stickers that I put on the front for orientation, uh, just because I'll sometimes I'll tend to fly a little farther away from myself. And given that this uh, quad is you know, the, the canopy doesn't really have a distinctive color pattern to, to distinguish front from back. I wanted something that would tell me what front was and what back was. Um, again, I had, I had a different quadcopter, 3D quadcopter before. 
and I liked it. It just it just didn't look good to me. Uh, it looked more like a frog in the middle of flight, um, and this one does not look like that. Again, very high quality. Uh, comes with the Zeal carbon uh, composite blades. Um, they're not carbon fiber and they're not plastic. They're basically carbon infused plastic, which they're going to be more rigid than normal plastic, but not as obviously rigid as carbon fiber. They'll still work fine for this, and they're eight by four and a half. So, if uh, you're able to find some eight by four and a half props, uh, you can definitely use those. Um, I don't know how it would uh, affect the flight performance. Recommended battery size is 1800 to 2250 milliamp, 3 or 4S. I think if you would go 3S, you could probably go up to a 3000 and keep it, you know, just as uh, uh, about the same weight as if you use a 2250 um, 4S. But I'm going to use 4S because I know the power of it and it's going to be a lot more fun for me. Um, so right now what I'm using is, because I have them lying around, is some Turnigy Nanotech A-Spec. They're supposed to be high discharge, but realistically they're probably around 25 to 30 C discharge. Um, I've used these on uh, an EDF jet and I've noticed the difference between these and uh, like a regular 30 C uh, Turnigy battery. I'm not endorsing these by any means, um, but like I said, these are what I had lying around. So I will probably eventually uh, get some 1600 OptiPowers, uh, something that's going to have a, a closer to a true labeled C rating. Um, you can also, I could probably use a 3000 milliamp. I have this gray pack lying around. Um, it, I know it'll fit in there. There's plenty of room for it. Uh, it's not any uh, high, uh, higher or wider than the Eternity battery. It's a little bit longer, but uh, it, it's, it's a little bit heavier, uh, a few grams heavier. So if I'm just wanting to fly around straight, or this would be good if I wanted to maybe take the canopy off and put a camera on for uh, some AP or even make it an FPV rig. Um, in the base flight software, you can actually disable the uh, 3D function and just keep the motor spinning one way. And there is actually a couple of spots for a camera. You can mount one under here, like a little Mobius or something, or, or on top um, if, if you want to fly with the canopy off. Uh, that's totally, totally doable. And there's plenty of room for uh, a video transmitter and uh, anything like that so there's some options if you want to go that route um, but again it's it's pre-assembled so there's uh, it's it, if you're the kind of person that just wants to jump in and fly it's the, it's definitely the kind for you uh, if if you're the kind that wants to build anything uh, give it two or three times wait till you crash it you'll probably replace some parts so you'll get you'll get some wrench time if you want it uh, it's kind of cool because it seems like the uh, important parts are enshrouded in the carbon fiber, so it's going to uh, withstand some impact. Uh, same with the speed controllers. Um, you know, the, uh, the landing gear is going to take any kind of impact before any vital electronics is going to take the impact. Uh, one important note you might want to know in case you get a, want a little tricky, want to get a little tricky, the canopy is taller than the uh, top of the propellers, so inverted landings are not going to be possible without damaging the canopy and the canopy is so nice I wouldn't I wouldn't want to risk it so getting into the manual really fast um, it's going to be a color manual very easy to follow uh, it, it even to shows you how to put things together just in case you need to rekit it uh, right now it's only available as a fully assembled kit it does not come with the micro USB but uh, if you have a cell phone, chances are you probably have that already for charging it. Um, there's two things that you need to do. You need to download the base flight software, uh, and they give you the, the web address for that. You also need to download the driver for that. And I'll include both of those in my details on this video, uh, just so you can, it's, it's kind of long to type in, especially this part, because or especially the, uh, the base flight software. It's got a whole lot of jumbled letters at the at the end I'm not really sure what they are but it's it's more like a programming thing um, important thing to know is you want to install the driver before you plug in the uh, the nozzle the nase board into your computer that way it'll automatically install the driver if you don't and you plug it in first it'll install the the flight controller but it won't install the software so 
or I mean, the, it won't install the driver. So you'll have to manually install it, which is kind of a pain in the butt. You have to find out where, where you downloaded it at and then, you know, have it manually install it. It's also ready and capable for S-Bus Futaba high-tech JR um, Spectrum. Pretty much any radio that's on the market in, within popularity uh, gives you the uh, endpoints, the ch any channels you might need to reverse, uh, and then it's got some pictures of what the uh, control software is going to look like once you open it, and uh, it's got things circled that you need to remember to check or, or modify. <coughs> um, also in the in the software, it'll tell you the the which direction the the motors are supposed to rotate. And that's very important uh, because if they're not rotating in the correct direction, you will crash. You won't even probably be able to take off. Um, and also, it's also going to show you on the back page, let me get to that real quick. It's going to show you which directions the uh, motors are supposed to turn. It also give you a, gives you a CG marker, um, which is basically in line with the points of the canopy or the points on the frame. Um, and so that's where you're gonna you're gonna base the CG off of, and it was exactly for me, uh, right where I had the battery and I and I CG'd it, put the canopy on, took it out, and it hovered without any movement at all. I was any, even able to pyro in a flat circle, and it didn't move. Um, so that's another thing you want to check before your final before your uh, final uh, or for your, before your initial maiden is. Uh, Make sure the motors are spinning in the correct direction and make sure you put the propellers on the right way. The, the propellers do not have an arrow indicating which propellers go on which motors, um, but it's pretty easy to, to know if, uh, if you know which way the motor is spinning um, or the, it's supposed to spin. Just put the corresponding blade that it's going to give it an upward lift. So if the motor is spinning this way, it's going to push the motor, it's going to push the motor up because it's pushing the air down. Pretty simple. Um, if, if you have any experience in any kind of flying radio control aircraft, then it, it should come pretty second nature to you. There's also uh, some tips for connecting your radio gear, some inf other information that they put in here. It's uh, something they added after they printed the, the manual. Um, and it's basically telling you if, if you need to connect the S-Bus, it's, it's, it's going to be an updated, um, updated thing, and then it shows you uh, a lot of detail on the board itself if, if you need to, uh, you know, for whatever reason, if you wanted to uh, make a custom frame board or anything like that. Also shows you how to hook up a CCPM or CPPM receiver. Uh, you can, and then it also has the instructions for binding the NACE32 um, without the receiver. So if you don't have a receiver, you can still bind it. Don't worry about that. You can go into the base flight software and it will, and here's the instructions that will tell you how to do that. And that's it. And the links again are still on this page too. So you have two printed links. And I, like I said, I will give you a, uh, another uh, set of links, clickable links that you can, uh, that you can uh, click on to get to right where you need to go. Uh, and that's all for right now. So if you want, if you want uh, more information or you want to check this out and uh, check the pricing and everything, you want to go to www.aerialfreaks.com, and it's spelled exactly like this. Oops, let me get it right there. Aerialfreaks.com. That's all for now. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I will be putting up a flight video soon. Uh, I'll probably be taking it tomorrow and posting it up tomorrow night, so it should be ready tomorrow night or Monday. Uh, which would be the 15th, or actually the 16th, because today is Valentine's Day. So, um, also, if you like this video, please don't hesitate to subscribe, because I do post other flight videos, reviews, and modifications that uh, people might be interested in. So, thanks for watching.